Thank you, President. Um, I rise to speak again on the urgent need for this state to show leadership in addressing the climate crisis. I, and, and I use the word leadership um, ex explicitly because I think this is actually at the heart of it. And I was thinking about what, what we mean by leadership in the sense of a clear vision around where we want to go and willingness to make tough decisions based on the best information and evidence, and evidence in front of us. And I actually think this government, um, this McGowan government, actually did show really strong leadership in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic and actually did exactly that. Where we're not using that, I think, strong evidence-based leadership has been around climate and, and, and the future and health of this state. Um, on the basis of that is, I think, under threat. And we are also missing out some really key opportunities. I just draw members' attention to the government's own inquiry um, around the climate health inquiry, which actually identified this decade, from between now to 2030, as being the vital decade to address um, climate risk and actually hold us to that 1.5 degrees. And that's the really important bit. That 1.5 degrees Celsius, heart of the Paris Agreement, evidence everywhere says this is actually at the heart of what we need to do. And I actually want to quote the Premier, who actually stated in his parliament in 2019 that he agreed that the science of anth anthropogenic climate change has effectively been settled for two decades and no serious government can ignore the policy implications. I absolutely agree with that statement. It's a strong statement, but it's one that we now need to back up with strong action as well. Because in this state, our emissions are rising. In fact, um, the government's own climate policy acknowledges not only our emissions are rising, but they're expected to grow for the short to medium term under business as usual. Now, that's important because not only will they grow, but they're growing from a point where we already have the highest emissions per capita on the planet. Um, in, in this state, pretty much among the highest, and we actually need to see this action. Now, there's been some good steps in the right direction. Very pleased to see we do have a Minister for Climate Change, actually, a Minister for Climate Action. I, like, I really like that term because it actually says to me that business as usual is something that we won't be considering. But I was concerned when looking at the Scarborough project over the last week that it actually was a very much business as usual approach to that approval. We're seeing, once again, Woodside, the, the, the Woodside and BHP actually set those, those targets for the kind of climate uh, targets that, that, that they're setting, rather than actually seeing they set that are consistent with our international obligations. If we're serious about this, we shouldn't be approving such weak conditions. So, this, so for those of this is the Woodside and BHP project, um, that recently got environmental approvals, we'll see nearly 1.2 billion, not million, billion tonnes of greenhouse gases um, bumped into our in, in environment, making it the most polluting fossil fuel project in, 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 in this country. Now, there are targets, they're 30 per cent by 2030, but that 30 per cent is not nothing, but most of those reductions come in nine years' time, not now. This is not the kind of things we need to be seeing right now. And I want to be clear, this is not something that I'm saying, not just something that the Greens are saying. In fact, I was just reading today a really interesting report by a whole bunch of institutional investors, over 500 of them, the Climate Action 100 Plus. This includes Australia's largest superannuation funds, because international giants like BlackRock. And they've said really clearly that we must speed up emissions cuts, um, and, and this actually has severe impacts for, uh, in fact, as a game changer is a word that they used for oil and gas. And this is on the back of the International Energy Agency's report last month, which contained a very stark warning that we should avoid funding any new oil and gas projects if the world was able, going to be able to achieve the Paris Accord's goal of limiting global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees. So that's that one part of the Scarborough project. I think clearly, I think we haven't got our targets right in relation to how that must reduce emissions. Of course, the other part is the rock art part. We are seeing that the level of emissions from this project, the, the Woods, Woodside and BHP Scarborough project, will further damage the First Nation World Heritage rock art on, on the borough. Now, this is only a year on from the horrific destruction of the caves at Jukun Gorge, and we're seeing, unfortunately, another project that I, I fear We'll see more of this, ama this state's amazing heritage that goes back many tens of thousands of years 
de destroyed. In fact, we've seen already um, emissions from the Pluto LNG processing facilities um, damaging this, as I asked the question that, that, that was given today. Um, Senate inquiries looked into this very matter, and federal Labor agreed that this is of huge concern. So while I welcome actually yesterday's announcement that a new contract has been awarded to monitor um, the, the emissions, uh, what I don't want to see happen here is, is that what we're going to see is simply that we are monitoring and recording its destruction. As someone put it, is this just jukin in slow motion? I certainly hope not. So we are at a really important point in terms of the climate crisis. We're at an important point in terms of the borough. Um, and what I would love to see from this parliament, um, from both houses, is that we actually take this challenge seriously and don't just have, an, have a further four years that our business as usual would actually step up to the challenge and the opportunities that, that, that lay ahead in terms of a